Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Friday, December 8th. It's day 63. Mm -hmm. um, today, just recently, uh, Secretary Blinken issued a rare criticism of uh, the Israeli military. And he said that um, there remains a gap between the intent to protect civilians and the actual results that we're seeing on the ground. That's as close as the U.S. has come uh, to a criticism of the Israeli government since October 7th in terms of their bombing campaign and their ground incursion in Gaza. Israel's pushing forward with its deadly assault in the southern Gaza Strip. Um, and the United States continues to say that Israel must put a premium on civilian protection uh, while it is battling Hamas. So... Um, perhaps we're seeing a, a shifting point. Uh, we also know that the uh, Karam Shalom crossing, which is a crossing between Israel and Gaza, is set to open for the inspection of humanitarian aid trucks for the first time since the outbreak of October 7th. Um, an Israeli official announced this, and the Karam Shalom crossing um, should be reopened in the next couple of days. And the idea is that this would allow Israel to be able to check the trucks more rapidly. My understanding is they wouldn't go through that crossing. They still would go through Rafa. Um, at least I had heard that. Um, but this is a much needed boost to try to increase humanitarian operations um, and the much, much needed uh, food, water, and medicine that's going into Gaza. Today, uh, Friday, the UN Security Council is set to meet and vote on whether or not to urge an immediate ceasefire. Um, that's according to the Secretary General Guterres, who invoked um, this week, we've talked about the rarely used power of Article 99 um, to warn about the impending humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. And so we're waiting to see what's going to happen at the UN Security Council. Will the U.S. abstain? Will, will the U.S.? What will they do? <clears throat> and so that's a, a significant action set to happen today. I wanted to call your attention, and I couldn't remember if I mentioned this this week, but there was an open letter from professionals at Jewish organizations. Um, and uh, we'll be sure to share the link. Uh, but this now has more than 500 staff. The current number of signatures, it says, is uh, 643. Um, and... Uh, because of concerns of job loss or retribution to organizations, there's many levels of anonymity accommodated for signatures, um, but organizations are for identification pur purposes only. I thought this was really incredible. This is Jewish leaders of um, within Jewish organizations across the U.S. that are calling for a ceasefire. Um it says in this letter, our texts read, God, listen to my cry. Your ears be attentive to my plea for mercy. That's from Psalm 130. Our hearts are heavy for Israelis and Palestinians who have suffered brutal loss of life, for whole communities that have been destroyed and displaced, for millions of children who deserve so much more than this. We write this letter from a place of deep love and grief for all these worlds lost and for all who are living through this horror. The price is too high to pay, the burden too much to bear. This violence must stop. And I just want to say amen to that. Um, I'm grateful for all of the groups uh, that are calling for a ceasefire, and many of them are quite courageous um, in doing so. Uh, so much gratitude uh, in that regard. Um, I also wanted to let you know on Capitol Hill, Van Hollen, uh, who's the U.S. Senator from Maryland, uh, Durbin, Kane, Schatz, and other colleagues announced an amendment that would require the use of U.S. Uh, supplemental aid to comply with U.S. and international law. So more than a dozen senators are pushing for this amendment. Um, one of them, at least, is independent. I think the rest are all Democrats. Um, but they announced that they're working on an amendment that would require weapons received by any country under the proposed national security uh, supplement uh, to um, use those weapons in accordance with U.S. law. And so that's quite significant. Um, so wanted to let you know about that uh, as well. Um, here is a quote from Senator Van Hollen. He said, U.S. taxpayer dollars have never come in the form of a blank check. 
It's critical that we hold all nations who receive our assistance to the same standards. And that includes ensuring the use of this assistance is in line with U.S. law, international humanitarian law, and the law of armed conflict. We must also insist that our partners cooperate with us in allowing delivery of humanitarian assistance. Our amendment does all that and puts in place necessary reporting to Congress in order to track these measures. As we work to provide critical funding to the National Security Supplemental, I look forward to working with my colleagues on these fundamental issues. And finally, I wanted to close by acknowledging that um, I think uh, many, if not all of you know that uh, in Jewish tradition, the day starts at night. And so last night was the beginning of Hanukkah. Uh, and so today would still be the first day of Hanukkah. And I've been reading Trua. Uh, it's a Jewish human rights organization, and they've been um, sending out uh, information. And their reflection on the first day of Hanukkah was actually about light and darkness. And so they said this, as the days in the Northern Hemisphere get shorter and colder, we seek the comfort of light, warmth, and community. And they talk about the winter holiday, holidays. Um, and they said that... Um, uh, they were talking about a podcast that they have, but they find themselves um, frustrated with the metaphor of the way that darkness and light can reinforce racist, racist notions about light being good and darkness being bad and these false binaries that we talk so much at CMEP, at least that's how I read it. And so uh, this reflection went on and said uh, from Trua, we know that the words we use matter so much in constructing how much how we understand the world. We don't talk about the wave of migrants because migrants are people, not water. We don't talk about virulent outbreaks of anti-Semitism because anti-Semitism is a human construct, not a disease. And so then they went on to say we reject Prime Minister, deeply reject Prime Minister Netanyahu's October 16th claim to the Knesset that was also shared on social media that Israel is in a war between the children of darkness and the children of light, because Hamas and Israel are comprised of people, not mythical beings. The power of words can sometimes obscure the power of what goes unsaid. We typically start paying attention to the creation story at the words where it says, let there be light. But in Adaret El, 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 Eliyahu, uh, a commentary by the guy on Avilna in the 18th century, we read that darkness was actually one of the first five things that God created a fundamental building block of the universe. This reminds us to challenge our assumptions about what might be worthy of our attention. And so our prayers and thoughts are with our Jewish friends as we uh, are in the middle of the Hanukkah season, our prayers and thoughts for all who continue to suffer from the bombardment and the ground invasion in Gaza. Continue to call your members of Congress and call for a ceasefire. We will continue our efforts. I'm in Atlanta this weekend, um, and we have our Monday uh, Christmas ceasefire service. We hope you'll join us in DC or online as we continue in this work together.